What's up guys, Turbo Man here, 351, and um, well, I got the piston out, and um, that lean pop was sure lean pop, brother, so let me show you the damage that happened. A little surprising on what happened here, um, kind of caught me off guard, but then I, I did some research on YouTube to other people having the same problem, and so it, it made sense, but hopefully this will focus. You see that right there? It cracked right in between those two holes. And you see those two marks on the ring lands? There's, they look like scratches. That's a crack. The bottom one there is a crack. And you come over here and it cracked right there on the piston ring lands here. You can see right there where it's a little discolored, where it looks like a rainbow color. Yep, that's where it got really hot. Okay, so it cracked right there. And then it really cracked badly up in here. And if you look at it, it started there, and then it came all the way down up to that crack there. So basically, this whole piece of the piston here, between this crack here and here, all this piece right here, was trying to blow out. I got real lucky, guys. Real lucky. Uh, so obviously, I know what's going on. You can buy these pistons... Uh, buy the single. They're only a hundred bucks, which is awesome. So that's an easy repair, easy fix. Um, the piston rings, dude, all were absolutely fine. Remember I said on the video before, it's probably a busted piston ring, right? Because there was no compression in that cylinder, or very little. But the rings are absolutely perfect, man. I could absolutely reuse these. So that's a testament to how good those rings are given that they didn't break but the piston broke and I don't know if that's just a weak casting but it's not the, the cylinder went lean man it went lean and um, I don't know how or why it went lean I'm still trying to investigate that obviously something in the fuel system got in the injector and caused it to go lean it's not a tuning problem um, I don't know I really don't know. I gotta check the fuel lines. You know, I use those, you know, rubber, you know, braided, steel braided fuel lines like everybody else uses. It's the Summit brand. Um, but they've been on the car for a couple of years, and I'm just thinking I started running that uh, race gas, that 110 Sunoco, and I was mixing it in. Let me show you over here, guys. Just not even like three to four weeks ago, I started mixing this race gas in with the tune a little bit you know just to be safe you know and I noticed that it's leaded race fuel not unleaded I don't know if that has anything to do with it I doubt it but um or make you know cuz you know race gas is very hard to burn and I'm wondering that maybe it, it wasn't burning well no that doesn't make any sense um but I don't know man I don't know if that had something to do with it, but I was mixing it in with the 93 octane. I don't know. I doubt it, though. I doubt it. Um, so I'm going to check the fuel lines. Um, you know, I'm going to go all the PTFE fuel lines, man. It's like refrigerator line, but like high-grade stuff for race cars. And um, a lot of people go to those. They're a little expensive. For 15 feet of it, it's like... $160 or something, yeah, but you never have to worry about the stuff ever breaking down. It lasts forever. I can run any type of fuel I ever want to, never have a problem. I just think that the rubber, you know, the black rubber hose is basically all that is with the steel braided uh, outer skirt is what those other fuel lines are, you know what I mean? And they've been around forever, you know, this stuff here, you know. It's been around for a long time, but just that inner liner in there, you know, is just a regular rubber hose uh, fuel line. And what's preventing from the inside of that hose, after having it for a couple of years, what have you, uh, breaking off and some of that stuff getting clogged in your injectors and what have you. I only run one fuel filter on my system, so that's probably a problem there. And it's a uh, filter that's really close to the tank. I come out about maybe... I don't know, two feet, and then it hits the filter, and then the rest of the 10-foot line goes to the front of the car. And so I'm going to do a pre- and post-filter 
from Magna Fuel. They're 100 bucks each, but they're really good EFI fuel filters. So I'm gonna do that, and um, I'm gonna buy brand new injectors. I know that sounds a little crazy, um, but you know, to send these out and have them clean, flow tested, then get them back. Eh, I mean, I would like to know if the number four injector for the number four cylinder, like. I'd like to know if it was clogged to have a perfect and absolute idea what really happened, but I don't know. Um, and the Holly and the Terminator X, it has it for Snake Eater Performance Fuel Injectors, um, some Mopar injectors it has in there, but it also has Fuel Injector Clinic. And those are really good fuel injectors. They're like up there with Fuel Injector Dynamics or what have you. So I'm going to go with the set of Fuel Injector Clinics 1000cc fuel injectors. There are like 95 pound an hour injectors, really good ones. And um, and we'll go from there, dude. And I'll clean the whole fuel system, put all new fuel lines on. And I'll show you how you do that, guys. I'll show you how I run my fuel lines on the Fox, okay? And where to run them on the Fox body, because it's a little tricky to run fuel lines on a Fox body up into the engine bay uh, without getting really close to your exhaust. So I'll show you how I do it. Maybe it'll help you. And we're just going to put new fuel lines on it, new fuel filter, new injectors, and try to play it safe. So, all right, guys, there it is, man. There's the carnage, dude. I couldn't believe that. I mean, I mean, these pistons are only 600 bucks for the whole set, and they're a forge casting. And SRP is a brand of JE pistons. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Little scuffing here, but nothing bad, you know. Uh, the other side, not really bad at all, you know. I mean, everything looks really good on here. I mean, gosh, dude. I cannot complain. Um, but yeah, there it is, dude. Here's my shop, man. It's pretty tight in here, you know? It's not much room in here, but, um, you know, hey, I'm just thankful to have a shop, dude, you know? Somewhere just to keep everything out of the weather and just have something to do with it, you know? It's pretty cool. But, um, all right, guys. <laughs> that was the first time ever. I had something like that fail on a race car. I've never had problems like this before, ever, with parts failing and almost a catastrophic failure. Um, it's my first time ever going lean, man. But, um, all right, guys, and you guys are probably wondering, why didn't the Holly protect you? Doesn't the Holly protect when it goes lean and holds the injector open? Yeah, that's for the whole tune of the car. If the whole tune, the whole engine starts to go lean, it'll hold all the injectors open. But for each individual cylinder, if one cylinder goes bad and there's nothing there for it to pick up on it because it's still reading all seven um, banks of the car and those are reading fine. So it thinks it's okay. So if you have one cylinder that goes bad, you know, unless you have those EGTs and all each of the exhaust uh, would be able to help you, but it's not going to know if one cylinder goes lean. Because uh, there's no sensor there in that cylinder to let it know that. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the, in the Holly, if the injector was not spraying right or not enough fuel, I don't know if it can detect that. Maybe through a fuel pressure. Um, but I have a fuel pressure sensor in here. Um, but, you know, it's not going to tell because it'll read 43 pounds through the whole system. And if one starts to, you know, not get enough spray out and it goes lean and does that, it's not going to be able to know that. Um, because you'd have to have each individual cylinder, you know, for each, you know, cylinder in there or sensor for that. So I don't know. You got to have the dominator with all the exhaust gas temperature sensors in the exhaust right there in front of the cylinder. And um, it can help you that way. But I don't know, guys. So easy fix. It's not expensive. It's only 100 bucks. We'll throw it back in. I'll put the piston back in the motor, put everything back together, and we're off and going. So really, it only cost me maybe 200 bucks. You know, 100 bucks in gaskets, you know, two head gaskets, an oil pan gasket, an intake manifold gasket. Uh, yeah, and that's it, dude. We're off and running. All right, guys. I'll keep you up to date, and I'll bring you a video on the fuel system for a turbo car and a fox body and how I do it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Peace.